Well, good evening, everybody. Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network. And we continue, really start to wind down the one-on-one summer series, one-on-ones. And today, I am here with uh, a guy that, I, first of all, I've become friends with. And he is still an unbelievable talent, athletic talent. He's a great guy um, and a great mentor and coach to... Uh, many student athletes in this community. Uh, he is uh, an instructor. Uh, I, I, I never know what the official term is, trainer up at uh, Uberzadi, but he does some phenomenal work with Uberzadi as well. Please help me welcome in uh, Mr. Dylan Rita. Dylan, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great, Alan. Uh, excited to be on. Thanks for thanks for letting me come in and uh, chit-chat a little bit. I'm excited. Now, you know... <laughs> You are a guy that does, that has done, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 31. Okay. In your 31 brief years on this planet, I don't know that I've ever met a guy that has done in as much as you have and been to as many places as, quite honestly, you have when you stop and think about it. You're from San Clemente, California, mm-hmm. right? You're here in Florida. You've played football overseas. You've been up to New York. For, I mean, you've been all over. For sports. Yep. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. So San Clemente, California, like you said. Then uh, my first college was Ohio University. So I was up in Athens, Ohio. Rebounded, went back to JUCO, did two years JUCO football at uh, Santa Ana College. Ended up at Southern Miss. And then uh, two-year starter at Southern Miss. Then my whole family left California. They were looking for a reason to leave anyway. So they ended up leaving. Uh, Came to Florida. I finished my... You know, senior year, then I worked as a GA at Southern Miss, and then I started looking to play football abroad. So um, my dad told me that they had football in Europe, started kind of scouring the Internet to figure out exactly how that works, how I go about getting on there. And then, uh, yeah, my, my family moved to, to Florida. I came down for a few weeks, decided I was going to Denmark, and then, yeah, did, was in Denmark, traveled all over Europe. I mean, it's, it's crazy that a lot of people don't realize that American football is bigger than just America. Like, it's played, yeah. it's played everywhere in the world. And you tell – I mean, it's played in Egypt, for example. They play football in – No, the, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they play American football. I mean, where, you, where do they play? Next to the pyramids? They well, do. that would be a great the, backdrop the, the, for a stadium. The Cairo Wolves actually play football – by the pyramids. That's wild. Yes. It's crazy. It's That's crazy. Wild. So so American football has brought me on a journey that um get him a water. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, American football has brought me on an incredible journey around the world. And then yeah, last year, you know, with the bobsled got to got to go up there to Lake Placid and try that out and that was awesome. And uh yeah, and actually my official title with Uber I'm the head strength and conditioning coach. There you go. Thank you. So, head strength. And I can definitely see that because you're a powerful, powerful individual. Um I apologize. We keep our water at room temperature because if, if it's if it's if it's cold, it runs all over the yep, table. Yep. Uh, here with Dylan Rita, uh, Dylan, um, your high school football days um, played for Coach Eric Patton at San Clemente High yep. School. Uh, one hundred and thirty career tackles, ten sacks, three varsity letters, all county, all conference in your mm-hmm. senior year. Um, then you get to Southern Miss. I'm looking at your bio here. Uh, as soon as you got there, you became one of the team's two primary starting linebackers. Uh, started 11 games, appeared in all 12. Um, did not uh, – I mean, you, that's just you. That's who you are. 55 tackles, 28 solo, 27 assisted. How did you know you were good enough to play professionally? Um I just always, I mean, I really didn't know that I athletically might have been a professional, you know, talented football player. But I always just wanted to be, I know it's such a cliche saying to be the hardest worker in the room, but that was something my dad really instilled in me because I knew I I wasn't the fastest. I knew I wasn't the most athletic. I knew I wasn't the strongest, but I always had hustle and I always had heart and I always just, um, you know, and I I made it work with that. And I just, you know, learned to grind. My dad always, I wrestled also. And I feel like that's a sport that a lot of kids don't realize 
you know, makes you gritty. And I was always gritty. You know, I always was able to, uh, you know, just kind of play gritty, you know, yeah. dirty football. Yeah. Um, I actually played D line. I was a three technique until I could see that Yeah, until I was in eighth grade. And then they moved me to defensive end, which I probably should have continued to play. I played defensive end and a rush outside linebacker. And then my senior year, Coach Patton was like, hey, we need him in a linebacker. So they threw me inside, and they said, figure it out, kind of. And, yeah. uh, and I just kind of figured it out from there. So I was always a great pass rusher. I was always a good blitzer and uh, could really play sideline to sideline. Um, but I didn't really realize I was good enough to play. Even my senior year in college, I think I started talking to some CFL scouts, some NFL scouts. Unfortunately, my senior year at Southern Miss, I missed half of the season. for I had a concussion against Nebraska, and then I broke my collarbone against Marshall. Ooh. So I missed six games. Um, and then I, yeah, I did my pro day, and I was just – I mean, we went 1-23 in my two years at Southern Miss. Oh. So um, it was actually the first program we went – the year that they recruited me, they were 12-2, and two, won the conference championship when Case Keenum was at Houston and broke all those records. Southern Miss knocked them off in the conference championship game. And, uh, you know, they were ranked 13th in the country. Larry Fedora was the head coach. He recruited me there. Signed my letter of intent. The next day, Larry and his whole staff leave to North Carolina. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I get to Southern Miss, and we go 1-23. And, and then I, I, my heart kind of left the game a little bit because of that. Yeah. Um, so then I worked as a GA for a year. You know, I didn't really think I wanted to play. And then as soon as football season started back up when I was working in the weight room, I had that itch to, to play again. And then that's where my dad was like, hey, you know that they play American football, you know, in Europe. So, like I said, then I did some research and, uh, you know, found uh, the Triangle Razorbacks, the team that I'm, I'm going back to play for, and um, went over there my first season. We went 12-0, and won the championship, and, uh, you know, just kind of turned into one did of Did you things. play for Larry Fedora? I did not. Okay. I did not, unfortunately. He recruited <laughs> me. I went on my official visit there. I, uh -huh. I mean, I, I knew him. Coach Duggan, um, actually, this is, this is why football is such a small world, too. So Coach Duggan was the linebacker coach that was under Fedora, and mm -hmm. Coach Dish, Dan Dish, um, was the defensive coordinator. So I got really pretty good relationships with them prior to signing. And then they both leave. Duggan ends up coming back my senior year. And he was my linebacker coach in my DC my senior year, thankfully, because he's probably one of the smartest guys I know when it comes to X's and O's for football. Coach Dish goes to North Carolina. He's the, the defensive coordinator there for a few years. He ends up going to Europe. He's the head coach for the Keel Baltic Hurricanes a couple years ago. And then 2020 COVID year, Coach Dish is uh, messaging me on Euro players. And he's like, hey, man, I'm the defensive coordinator for the Prague Lions. Are you interested in coming to play for me finally in Prague? So I'd already been talking to Zach Harrod, the head coach for the Prague Lions, and he told me that he was bringing Dish over there. And I was like, well, yeah, man, you're like, come on. I was supposed to play for you like eight years ago when I was a 21-year-old 20, <laughs> kid. And so he actually just won a championship with the Prague Lions this year as their defensive coordinator again. So he's still – Travel. He's just traveling. He's sixty-eight or sixty-seven years old. Just traveling ball coach now. You know. I mean, you you actually had the opportunity, if I remember reading correctly, when you went, you met Lauren, right? Yeah. So we met actually here. She here? moved to Florida. She's from Wisconsin. So okay. She, she moved here. I met her right before I left. The right. First time. So she yep. goes with you, right? Yep, Twenty sixteen. Yeah. Right. And then you get to play. You t you talk two of your good friends into doing this, right? Yeah, They're yeah. going with you. Yeah. So you got married over there. We did. Yeah. And so that had to be a lot of fun. Oh t yeah. Tell me about, tell me about uh, your wife and your two beautiful kids. Um, well, my wife is, uh, you know, I got to say she's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. You know, God blessed me with an incredible wife. She's great at everything I'm not good at. Right. So, right. I mean, she's handy. She Perfect can, compliment. Oh, exactly. Right. She can fix anything. You know, her dad's a carpenter, so she's a carpenter. She, I mean, she can do, she can do whatever, you know, build a fence, fix anything in the house. She's just like that. She's just, her brain's like wired way different, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, you know, she, uh, demasculates me i guess I would say, you know? like, <laughs> well, we all need it you know yeah so she's like hey just, she'll just have me pick up the four by four yeah, go, you, right? know, go, go, you go pick up the heavy stuff i'm gonna build the fence in the backyard you know right and uh you know she's supportive of everything i do she's always just you know given an opportunity to go play i mean i went in 2019 when she was pregnant with my son and she let me go play that season and she was here by herself with uh with my daughter leah wow. And my kids, man, they're, they're incredible. You know, again, God bless me with two beautiful children. Um, Leia, my daughter, I'm telling you right now, she is going to be all American something. She, that, that girl, Athlete, huh? At, 
Did mom play any sports? Yeah, Lauren was a high jump state champion in the state of Wisconsin. Check it out. Yeah. All right, now. Okay. All right, I got, I got to say a little. My, my dad always told me, make sure you find a breeder. That was always the thing. <laughs> Growing up, my dad said, hey, make sure she's tall and athletic. And, yeah. uh, and make sure you look at her mom. If her mom's looking good and when she's in her 30s or 40s, you know your wife will look good. There, and there you go. Right? Lauren, I, I've, well, I've heard the same thing. That's uh, – that's for sure. Yeah, so Lauren's mom's beautiful, so I knew, you know, Lauren was going to be beautiful as, as we, we continue to go along this journey and age in life. And, um, you know, my wife is still beautiful and my kids are beautiful, so they're thankfully going to be athletes themselves. So, yeah, my, my family is extremely supportive of everything I do, and, and I'm just really grateful that, uh, you know, that I have them to be a part of, you know, everything that I do. So One of the big reasons, and we're here with Dylan Rita, strength and conditioning uh, trainer over at Uber Zotties, one of the big reasons I wanted to have you here today is because we're not going to see you for a while, are we? No, yeah. So um, I'm planning to leave. Th- everything permitting, I went and got my visa up in uh, D.C. taken care of this past Monday, and I'm supposed to be leaving August 10th. And um, we've where, are you, got, where are you going? I'm going to Denmark, yes. Yeah. I'm going Back over there to Denmark. Back to Denmark, yeah. So they, they wrote me. It's, a, it's an opportunity. Um, you know, thankfully, I, I love that I work for Uber Zotti, Tim and Bo. Um, you know, I spoke to them about this opportunity, and I'm obviously going to be working still while I'm over there. So we've got some things that we're uh, that we're working on as a gym. I can't really uh-huh. say can't say much about it yet. No, I got you. But um, you guys will you guys will find out probably closer to the end of the year. And then right. the landmine training that I do, they're running a certification in Prague while I'm over there. So I'll get to go over there to Prague. I'm going to talk about Uber Zaidi to all the coaches how our training is changing the game you know right. i mean you see how our athletes are they, every day they're completely you know they come in and they run on the treads and they they do the training that we have to offer the landmine the, the agility plyometric the we're just changing the game and um you know giving athletes across the world the opportunity to do these kind of training methods is is going to change the world in my opinion you know i'm, I'm hoping that we can make a, a imprint on athletes everywhere you have a lot of success over there in yeah. denmark uh, on the on the playing field you, yeah you really did i mean um I, i'm looking here uh you had a 12 and 0 season in 2015 yeah yep. uh, played in something called the mermaid bowl yeah, the, the mermaid bowl yeah one three three-time mermaid bowl champ every, there you go every year i've gone over there so it's because hans christian anderson is the writer of the right mermaid, right, right right so so that's why the games always I like played. that. That's yeah. a great connection. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So and then there's Hans Christian Anderson Elementary School here in Rockledge, right? But um, yeah. So 2015, 2016, back to back Mermaid Bowl champs. There you go. Um, we were ranked 13th in all of Europe those two years, and then 2019 when I went back, the team had fallen off. 2017 and 18, they hadn't really uh, continued that success, and then 2019 I went back in back there, and uh, we played. We played an international tournament. We got thumped. The worst loss I've ever taken in my life, actually, to the Vienna Vikings, who are currently the number one team in Europe. They beat us 60-0. to zero, And uh, we go into the playoffs that year as the third seed. We were – I mean, we, we were good, but we weren't like the team that, that, right. that we could have been, I think. But we proved it in the playoffs. We go into the number one seed on an away game in the semifinal. We beat them, and then we go to the Mermaid Bowl. We're a 20-point underdog, and we end up winning the game – what I think it was twenty four twenty one. I mean, it was it was crazy. So then we finished that season also ranked twentieth in all of Europe. So um, wow. So then this year the teams one and three. The the league is unfortunately kind of dwindled. Um, but football in Europe is really exploding right now. But a lot of the top players are going elsewhere to right to Germany. Now that Austria. opportunities are starting to open back up again because exactly. Europe it was you know a little bit behind because of covid exactly and they are beginning to open it uh, yeah so absolutely exactly so and that's why they dwindled yeah yeah exactly yeah. so but you know i got to call my shot i'm going back i've never lost a mermaid bowl so i'm i'm going back i got four games to make it to the championship game so right. we're we're going so all the you'll way. be gone from august 10th when would you be returning september 27th all so right our, so you're going for a little, little six weeks yeah six weeks not too bad it's enough time to play some football get some work done um you know so i'm also going over there i own a fundraising company so i'm going to be getting some some fundraising going i've worked with lots of programs here actually in the county um team raise so trying to help some of the programs that was initially my whole goal was to get over there and help american football financially grow because right you know the money is different in the states than it is abroad for the game you know and uh I, you, look dylan i thought nfl europe was a great venture oh, i just man. thought it was poorly managed i agree yeah and i thought it was a terrific idea um 
you know, there's guys that can play. Look, there's yeah. dudes over there. There, there are guys over there that can play football straight up. One of, I mean, my buddy Nico Lester. He's a German. He's German American. His his dad, you know, grew up or was in the Air Force, so he was right. over on the military base. But Nico only grew up playing football in Germany. I mean, the guy could play in the NFL from without a doubt in my mind. I mean, so there's guys over there. You know, it's yeah. just about getting the the exposure to the game. You know, so. Another reason why I'm going over there, if, if I can get more eyes and, and let the kids know that I train nowadays that you don't just need to make it to the NFL, just like, you know, the D1 or bust thing that a lot of these kids get in their head. It's like if you've got an opportunity to go play collegiate football at any level and you want to continue playing and get your education taken care of, then you should jump on the opportunity. Same thing with football. If you love the game and you want to keep playing and pursuing other options, I mean, you don't need to just make it to the NFL. There's plenty of other, you know, abilities to go play. And now, obviously, the USFL and XFL are kind of, giving us that ability in the spring here, but if, man. If, uh, so you're going to Denmark. So if you think that Vieira is a golf car community or parts of the beach are a bicycle community, you've yeah. never been to Denmark. Never. Because yeah. uh, everybody rides a bike in Denmark. Everybody rides a bike. And you could tell the people look like they're outside all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the town I'm in, Vila, it's a tiny little town. It's uh, It's really just like... It's a village, really, I would say. But everyone rides bikes or walks everywhere. Right. right. And Copenhagen is probably the bike capital next to Amsterdam. Yeah. Those two cities are, are crazy. So, yeah, I mean, if you, if you think Vieira is a, a little transportation town, you need to go. Yeah, you, you need to check through, out Denmark. Like yeah, sure. I had a buddy visit Denmark once. He's like, Alan. He's like, I like to ride a bike, but my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, my buddy Ryan Barry, our 2016 season, he actually ended up pulling his hamstring because him and his fiance at the time went on a bike tour around Copenhagen two days before Jeez. the game. Oh. He shows up and he's like, man, I think I shot my leg out before the game. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Uh, uh, yeah, stay off the bike, yeah, man. Yeah, so it can, it can be, a little, be a little too much if you're not used to it. Right. You um, And you are well in shape to go do this right now. And there's no doubt about that because of mm -hmm. what you do at Uberzati. But... There's something else you were involved in over the winter that we wanted to get you in the studio for. It just didn't work out that way. Uh, but you get, you tried your hand in something else, another sport. Yep. Talk about that. Yeah, so I did try out for the U.S. bobsled team last year. Um, <laughs> that was a great experience. You know, I got – it gave me – it motivated me to train for something again, which I felt like I was kind of missing. You right. Know? So, um, so I went up to Lake Placid, a beautiful – I mean, historic too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely beautiful place. And yeah, just seeing the history. I mean, there was stuff like yeah, it was still got the rank. The USA won the gold medal in in the mm -hmm. eighty Olympics. It was crazy. Yeah, we saw, yeah saw all the hockey. Yeah, all the stuff yeah. from Miracle. Just yeah. incredible stuff, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, tried my hand at that. I, I did pretty well. Um, they asked me to come back. Um, whether you're for the vaccine or not, whatever, I'm, I try to leave it unpolitical. I, I'm not vaccinated, and I told them I wouldn't be in order to go, and, you know, that, and that was they, it. And that was it. So, um, you know, they asked me to go back to be there actually in the winter. I would have gotten on the ice and stuff, but, you know, um, just personal reasons. I believe that, you know, I should have the freedom to do what I want. We live in America, and that's a freedom one of reason, choice. Freedom of choice, yeah. exactly. So, um, but it was an incredible opportunity. You know, I mean, David Simon, who was training at the facility, I just actually uh, relinked up with him a couple weeks ago. He came back in and trained, and uh, he's going back to to get back on the team this winter. So, so it's cool. I showed him That's the landmine cool. stuff, and he, we hit a little tread workout, nice. and uh, you know, still have some of those connections, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, f football. I'm a football guy, so if I get a chance to go strap it up, I'm a good strap, strap it, up. it up. That's oh, yeah. a great segue into where I want to go next, because you mentioned you're not vaccinated. And I don't know anybody that went through COVID issues like you did. And yeah. I don't just mean catching it. I think you spent a couple of days in the hospital. Yeah. Gave up. You said, you know, look, I, I've got, you know, I'm feeling it. But there are people that need this bed more than I do. Yep. Which, you know, uh, props to you on that. Uh, especially at that time because we didn't know uh, so much as we do now. Um but then you you uh, you were really put through the ringer, weren't you? Yeah. So uh, while I was over in Prague, actually going to play for for Coach Dish and Zach Harrod, um, we got over there, and uh, you know I was there for ten days, and it was right kind of when all of the it was February going into March, right, right at the start, right when COVID was turning into like you know what it became, 
And my grandparents were telling me, don't go, you know, things are looking like it might get kind of hairy right, and right. whatever. And I was like, oh, you know, but I'm trying to make this happen with my fundraising company. I'm trying to go play for Coach Dish and, and right. Zach. You know, I think that they're building something really cool. So, um, you know, I, I left, went over there. I flew. I wore a mask. I was the only person on the flight wearing a mask before the madness ensued, right? right. So um, fly over there and then, you know, I was – Touring the city, practiced the you know the second night I was there. I felt good, you know. I mean, I was like I said, I was there for ten days. Um, you know, maybe it was by like day four or day five, I started kind of feeling sick, and I was like, man, I was only feeling sick at nighttime. So I was like, during the day, I feel fine. Yeah. And like we were at practice, actually one one night in particular where it really hit me. We're at practice and we're doing inside run, and all of a sudden I just felt like I got hit by a truck. Like my whole body, I was like, dude, I am not feeling good at all. What is going on? Got home that night, I took a cold shower, and I was just, I had the cold sweats, whatever. So then I told Zach, I was like, hey, man, I think maybe I've got COVID potentially. And he's like, I don't know. It hasn't really, like, been found in the city yet, but I was riding trams, you know. I was, right. I was around people, I was, and everyone was, sure. in, everyone was in Prague at the time. So, I mean, I could have got it anywhere, you right. know. Um, could have caught it on that flight. Yeah, exactly, right. So, sure enough, um, all of a sudden, they declare the state of emergency. The country's locked down. You're done. Yeah, I'm done. So, you know, then they're like, hey, it looks like you're going to cancel the season. It's like the ninth day. I finally am feeling better. Like, physically, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, okay, I got to get on a flight because they're telling all Americans to You got to get out. I got to. You know, I don't. Right. they're telling all the Americans to head back to America. Like, right. you need to leave. So, finally, we wake up the day that I'm supposed to fly, and I feel, I feel good, right? right? I'm like, okay. But my travel this day was from Prague to London, from London to Dallas, Dallas to New York, New York to Orlando. The only mask that I had – so by this day, this is probably five days, I was feeling pretty good physically. Like I feel like I right. travel. I'm not coughing. I'm not – whatever. The only mask I've got is the training, like an elevation mask, right? right? So I walk in. I'm wearing the elevation mask. I wore the elevation mask for 19 hours straight of flying time, only like to snap right, on the right, flight. Right, right, right. That whole trail, all the way, finally, I get back home to Orlando at like 1 I in the morning. I couldn't stand wearing it from here to Atlanta. Yeah, exactly, right? So make it back to Orlando, get home, feeling better. I felt fine for about two days. You know, I felt, pre- I felt really good. So then we go to the beach because, I'm, you know, the ocean always, you know, I believe that the, the salt water, the magnesium, the vitamin D, it flushes your system out, right? So we go to the beach and my chest had been kind of feeling heavy, but at this point I wasn't running a fever. I wasn't right. None of the other symptoms, right? I you just, had mild symptoms. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, go to the beach and I jo- I dove in one under one wave. I mean, I grew up surfing. I grew right. up junior lifeguards. I've always been a strong swimmer. You know, I never had issue. I dove under one wave like shore break and I felt like I was drowning. I popped up. I was like, whoa, man, what is going on? So I walked up to the beach and then I had to like hawk a loogie and I spit and it was blood in my spit. And so I was like, you knew right. then. Yeah, so then, of course, my grandma being grandma, she right. said, you, you've got severe pneumonia or something. You need to go to the hospital. All right, grandma, I'll go to the hospital. I'll go yeah. to the hospital. They, they probably should have just stayed. Honestly, like now at this point in time, I do feel like it helped me to an extent, but I was hospitalized for three days. Right. Um, they, they, it was like I was in ET, right? They came at me with the – Sure, right. You know, the, and obviously, I understand at the time we didn't know what right, was going right, on. They read right. an x-ray of my lungs and they're like, hey, your lungs look really bad. So they gave me hydrochloroquine because it was right when they started talking about that. And right. then they gave me just an asthma inhaler. Right. So I took that for the first night, took the pills they gave me, hit the inhaler. The next day, I felt like my lungs felt good. Right. And I was like, feel pretty good. By, by the third day, I was like, okay, I feel like, like you said, I don't need to be here. I f- I'm not dying. Like, right. If I was dying and I felt like I was At that dying, time, people were beginning to. Exactly. Right. right. So then, of course, it becomes a whole thing, you know, because I wrote a little thing on Facebook about I've been, just been traveling. I should have definitely just. This made me very weary of social media. I always, always knew that I probably should be careful of what I post. Right. But I made a little thing saying what was going on with my situation, and all of a sudden that went viral. What was that like to wake up and see ABC News, CBS News, NBC News with your name? Yeah. Trying to, trying to. I mean, yeah, that, was, that had to be devastating. It was considering I mean, what you know you tried to do. Yeah. Yeah, it was just you know it is the way that the media you know most of the time the the way that they want. They always want it to be the worst, you right? Know? Right. And I was just talking about this actually a couple of days ago um, about how they always the media always just wants to spit like sports media is always like the stats don't lie about what we do. You numbers know? are numbers. Numbers are numbers. Facts right? don't care about your feelings. The, exactly. And the film doesn't lie. When I see you know 
Lamar Jackson throw right. for 19 picks as opposed to three interceptions. Right. That's a stat. Right. That we see. There's a problem. You see, exactly. You right. see it on the film. It doesn't lie to you, right? Where, like, something like this was, like, there was still so much limbo going on, and it was just kind of slanderous about how they went about things. Um, it was a lot slanderous yeah. in a lot of occasions. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the yeah, Associated Press blowing my phone up. Yeah. There, was, there was reporters driving by my house. Then they made it a thing where, like, I had gone – before I had even left for Prague, I had left the house with my kids. Before I was even sick, before any of this even occurred. Prague was no better. No, exactly. Right. Right, right exactly. But so they had turned it into a whole thing that they said I was leaving my house um, <laughs> while I was still sick. And I was going on walks around <clears throat> the neighborhood. And, the, and I was like, this – like, we have pictures of him – Walking the neighborhood with his kids after he got, and I was like, that picture was like three weeks ago before this was even, a thing. <laughs> you know, just the way they can spin things, you know. Yeah. So I did shut my Facebook down for like two months, sure, because um, I was getting people sending me. Surprised you went back? Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Well, my well you got to, can, you know, with with all the sports and things and the, and the student athletes that you're involved. Of with. course, and and you know, of course, COVID is is a serious. If you if you're elderly, if you suffer from immune deficiencies, there's definitely people that need to be worried about sure. COVID and what it can do. But if you're healthy and you take it, why are we not promoting being healthy? You know what I mean? Eating the right kinds of things and being out in the sun and going, jumping in the ocean. They were getting on me because I said, I went, I went to the gym to try and sweat it out. That's always, whenever I've been sick, I've always been like, I'm going to go sit in the sauna. I'm going to go get on the bike. I'm going to sweat. I'm going to help myself get fight off whatever this is, right? Well, and that's, that's the thing, right? That that as kids growing up, everybody's told by grandma and mom, right? You got to sweat it out. Yeah. Get under the covers and sweat it out. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yep. I can remember that. Sweat it out, Alan. You'll be all right. Yeah, you'll be good, right? Yeah. And so, like, you know, I mean, I do feel like I recovered faster because I was still practicing. I mean, I was out there running around and I was like, felt like I was dying, but I'm like, man, whatever. And, and this is something that, Technically, science says, I believe, and I could be wrong, but this is a 10-day virus, right? Yeah. Yeah. 10 to 12 days, 15 days max, right? Yep. So, yeah, I, I you know. So, obviously, COVID, I think, and I, I, I think I got pneumonia because going back to the flying, I think that I traveled. I, I that's was, what I would put, stake my bet on right there. I was flying for 19 hours with the elevation training mask on. I don't think that COVID. You're recirculating. Yeah, exactly. Right there inside. You, it could go on, nowhere. It couldn't go anywhere. Right. Exactly. But back into my lungs. So, I definitely right. feel like that was what made it as severe as it was. Because, like I said, by the time I was leaving, I felt good. I was like, I feel, you know, I feel health, like. Good enough to travel, right? right. If, if I didn't feel like I could have traveled, I would not have gone on the plane. Right. You know, I would have stayed in the, hey, I need to wait a couple more days to leave, whatever. I, 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 and, but, and being in a foreign country when something, I mean, well, I don't know because this was a first, yeah. but you had to be scared. Yeah. I mean, I, I, definitely at the time, you know, I had no idea what's going on with the world at that point. And I'm away from my family, I'm away from my, you know, my wife and kids and my parents, like, I want to be where I'm comfortable, you know, at the end of the right. day. And everyone can attribute to that. Like, because, say, it is as severe as, as they made it out to be at the time. And, you know, if I did have it to the point where maybe I'm dying from it, like, right. I, I'd rather be in. You want to come home and die. Yeah, exactly. I want, right. to, be, I want I to see my family it. one more time. I don't want to die in, in no, Prague I, without I, anyone around I me. I, I, I do understand that. And I can, you know. I understand. Uh, wow, what an ordeal. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. But the world is kind of, you know, things are going back to normal, so it's giving me this opportunity again to You to bounce try back and, fine. Yeah, bounce back. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've been able Health to Health-wise, are there any effects? Can you taste? Um, I can taste it. The only thing that did occur, which is another reason why I will not be getting vaccinated, is I suffered from bl blood clots after I had an ACL surgery yes. in 2014. Okay. So then when I first started working for Uber Zadi, actually, um, maybe like the third time I was running on the tread, like hard, I got finished running and the inside of my thigh was bright red and it was burning. And this was two months after I had had COVID. Right. Um, turns out I had blood, A clots blood clot in my thigh. And that can kill you like that because exactly. once that gets to your heart. Yeah. It don't matter how healthy you are. Oh, it doesn't You're matter. Done. doesn't matter. So then I was on blood thinners again for a year and a half. And then, you know, they're releasing studies saying that it can cause clotting if you're va getting vaccinated. I've already dealt with clotting. I've read those. Previously. So, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to put myself at risk of getting blood clots because they are scary. So like you, you said. you've only had COVID tested once, right? Yep. Positive. Only once. Okay. Yep. Well, I, you know, I am vaccinated and I've had it three times. So... I mean, it, it, 
It all depends, right? I feel right. like it's not, everything I, I, is fluid, and that's the problem. And, and the funny part about that is, every time, with the exception of once, and it was only for one day, I never got sick. Huh? I never, not one time, but one day did I ever get sick. Okay. Yeah. And the day I got sick. I was this close to going to the hospital because my temperature shot up to 102.9. Yeah. I was close. And I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. And I said, you know what? Let me do what I know to do when I felt like this in the past. And that was water, a little bit of medicine, yep. re- sleep. Yep. And finally, finally, I, once I got the fever to break, I started to feel better. Yeah. I was a little congested, but nothing like that. Yeah. yeah but yeah. yeah. And then you, you know, and then you have to sit in the house for, you know, even after vaccinated, once you get COVID. Twice I got it after mm-hmm. getting vaccinated, COVID. Okay. And then once you do that, you have to, you have to sit in the house for seven days. Yeah. Which is tough for what we do. So Caleb and Jackson got to go out and do the broadcast, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. How's Jackson doing, man? That, he's, he's Jackson's awesome, man. That kid is something, man. Yeah. Getting, getting to call the Coco game with him last fall was, that was cool. That kid is, he is a, on it. So when you come back, will you be able to do some broadcast? Oh, runs? definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. All but right. If I can't coach, let me get in the booth. Because, right, you know, yeah. just, Let me stick around the game because I, I love, obviously, you guys have just totally made sports in Brevard. I mean, you put it up. To I think we're, as far as media coverage goes, you're at the top of the line. Well, I 100%. appreciate that, man. And I think the sports in Brevard as a whole, we can compete with anybody in the country. No across, doubt. Across no softball, doubt. Softball, basketball, football, you name it. We've got we've got athletes all over this county, and you've done Thank a great you. job at that, letting it, that, everyone know. That. That, that, that means the world coming from you guys, and we love our partnership with uh, Uberzati. There's no doubt about that, Tim and – Bo and everybody and, and Marcella and Max. Uh, Marcella, and I got I got to give her a shout out for just. I heard about this. Yep. Tell everybody. Team Chili. Uh, she went over and played in the Basque tournament. Um, I'm sure she'll get to talk to you a little bit more about it. But um, they went over there and they won a won the Basque championship. Yeah. So she just got back and uh, she so scored their first run. Right. She did. Yeah, yeah. She's got some hardware to show off, and then so now they qualified. They've got another tournament coming up. I think it's in uh, Panama or Nicaragua, somewhere down there. So they're going to have another tournament that she'll be going to. And, uh, you know, she trains her butt off. I mean, you see the, the way that she worked with the Melbourne softball girls. Oh, yeah. You know, that she helped them. I mean, the whole staff, Mike, Max. Yeah, Marcella, everybody. Ev- yeah, Mike Devine's great. Everyone's just – everyone loves what we do, you know what I mean? And, and just how you're passionate about giving these kids coverage, we just live and breathe trying to give these kids the opportunity to yep. – to train like no one else in the country. And that's what makes Uberzati special, and that's why we partner with them because they – have the same love and passion for the student athletes uh, that that we do, and you know we. And when you share that with another business, it only makes sense to partner up. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, get set to wrap this up. So, are you nervous about going back over? You haven't played in a couple of years. You nervous? Um, I did play with the Space Coast Tar Heels a couple games. Right, last right. Year, but you know that's. That's not not throwing shade at the semi pro thing, but you know it's it is still a different ball game. Even though um, I'm nervous about leaving my family, obviously, right? Um, but about playing, no, no, I'm, I'm you're no, ready. I'm ready. I've been training all summer. I mean, I'm in the honestly at 31 years old right now. I'm in the best shape I've ever been, and just with the way that I've been able to learn how to train, so. I got five games. I'm aiming for 65 tackles, probably, and a championship. You know, I'm going to bring home some hardware myself, so i got to make well, sure that you, uh, you're going to have to catch up with us when we get back. And I would also recommend, too, that uh, Dylan once back in 2019, it's not that long ago, on uh, AmericanFootballInternational.com penned an outstanding piece uh, called Adversity, The Battles of a Football Life, The Battered Bastards by Dylan Reed. Check it out. It's a great piece. Uh, about how to overcome adversity and some of the things uh, that he went through to get to where he was uh, at that particular time. Um, Dylan, it's always a pleasure. It's been awesome, man. Thank you very much for having me. Always. Shout out to to all of our athletes. Uh, Looking forward to watching you guys this fall uh, compete in all your sports. Who you got? Last thing, who you got? Uh, You can't say Coco Rockledge, okay? Who do you think? 
watching these student athletes come in and train and knowing what you know. You got – if this were the NFL, you'd have the inside skinny yeah, on yeah, Sundays, yeah, yeah. right? All right, to be making the phone calls there 20 minutes before mm. game time. Yeah, yeah, plus three. No, I'm joking. But <laughs> <laughs> who is – I really am kidding. Who is uh, – Who's going to be surprise team this year? Surprise team this year. Ooh, I think Palm Bay is going to okay. be. Okay, Jake I think, Owens, yeah. Yep, I think they're going to be a surprise team. And uh, I guess Satellite wouldn't be much of a surprise team because I love Coach Helton. Um, I think that the personnel that they've got, I mean, I was out there doing, doing their speed work once a week, so I saw all their athletes all the time. Uh, they got some transfers over there that I think will, will make them a, you know, a better team. Um, so I think Satellite will be good again this year. And then uh, – Oh man, I think that's no, a, that's two good ones. Yeah, those are those are two. I think those would be my two. Um, you know, we got a couple of the Palm man, Zach, that kid at Palm Bay, dude. He's been into the facility the last couple of weeks. He's a Zach guy. Emery Foster. He's a guy. You know, Zach is an interesting case because he was their quarterback last year. Yeah. Now they've got a transfer from MCC and Jared Mobley, and Zach is playing wide receiver now. He's and he can go get that thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So. And that that kid's got a great head on his shoulders too. He's yeah. been he's been talking to me, you know. I've been I've been just kind of chit chatting with him during training sessions, and just you know. And he he wants to learn. He wants to you know. He's one of those kids that he gets it already. Right. You right. know what I mean? Sure. So it's, it's I do. You know, like OJ is the same kind of kid. Right. OJ Ross. Oh, and Cade. You know, I gotta I gotta give my boy Cade a little shout sure. out too. He's he's about to be balling this fall too. Of course, we know Coco is going to win a state championship. You know, I think right. everyone's on board there. But uh, you you got a little veer in your heart. I do, yeah. Uh, and you, know, you know a lot of the student athletes, the parents, the coaches. Yes. You're the linebackers coach there. Your dad was a defensive coordinator there. So with Shane, with Chase, because Chase works out. Chase actually was the first kid. Bi- I love the Kramar. Chase is like Chase is my guy, 100. percent Chase. He was the first athlete that I got to train. That Bill brought him to me. No, this, the first time I started doing any speed work, any agility work. I remember this a couple years ago. Yeah. yeah, when Chase was a little kid, 2017. Yeah. So um, he was the first kid that I actually got to work with one-on-one. So Chase is my guy, 100%. So um, I think Vieira will be – I think they could range from four wins to potentially seven wins right. depending on how the pieces fall in place for them. I love young. Shane. They're young. They're young. That's yeah. the thing. They're young, inexperienced. Um, the defense is going to need a little bit of help, I think. Um, but Chase is, I mean, you interviewed him a couple days ago. Yeah. The, the kid's got, he's a great kid. I love, yeah, Chase. I love Chase Cromartie, man. And, he's and my guy. His thing is, the thing that you can't teach it, his, the thing that you can never teach is poise. No. And he's mm-hmm. got it in. Cool. Cool, calm, and collected. Yeah, he is. And he's, he's a sniper back there, too. Yeah, I mean, he he's is. got a great law. Give, give that, his senior year, he's going to be the best quarterback in Central Florida for sure. Maybe. I am looking forward to seeing yeah. it. I really am. We got a, uh, a lot. As Dylan said before, uh, we are blessed here in Brevard County. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a lot of great student athletes in all sports. Uh, have the volleyball players started coming over there yet? We had Merritt Island Volleyball in there. Um, and then we had some of the satellite beach volleyball players in there okay. over the summer. All right. Get I'm trying working, to get but, volleyball in oh, there. Oh, man. Volleyball players in Brevard, if you guys want to hit harder, jump higher, you need to come in and you need to train with this us. This is I pro- promise. I, and, I promise. You know, it's funny because. Oh, I, we had one girl from Merritt Island. She ran a 5 2 laser 40 yeah, yesterday. No, no doubt. And I'm going to tell you right now, I texted in. Eh, here's the story. So, Merritt Island is one point from a state championship mm-hmm. in volleyball. One point away from going 3-0 and to win a state championship. And uh, it just probably still breaks my heart to even repeat this, but they lost. One point. One point, and they lost the next three sets. So, that is Man. one of the most devastating and heartbreaking things that a coach or players could ever go through, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... You have to, I guess, reevaluate at that time. Yeah. As good as that program is, and it's 185 straight against Brevard That's County wild. opponents, okay? Three conference losses for Angie Patrick in 20 years, okay? Five state championship appearances, mm-hmm. two state championships. So this program knows a thing or two yes. about a thing or two about volleyball. But when you suffer a loss like that, you have to look for something different. Reevaluate a little right. bit. Yeah. So, What's one thing we can do differently? Yeah, right. What yeah. puts you ahead of the curve? Right. And, you know that, and that's why 
we were already, you know, like you said, we're blessed with great sports here, but Uber's ID being here and your coverage of what we do, I mean, in the, in the next two years, Brevard is going to have, across the board, I'm going to say the best athletics in all of Florida. I, I, I did something with that program I've never, and I don't. People say, can I have this coach's number or that coach's number? And I never give them out, ever, because that's, that's breaching trust. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I made the connect, and I said, you know, I think Uber Zotti would be something. I would love to see how a volleyball team does. So I'm excited yeah. that I put Coach Patrick and Max, yeah. into, and I'm glad to hear that they came. And I'm mm. glad to hear that it's making a tremendous difference. Definitely, definitely. No doubt, no doubt. All right, because that Vieira team is going to be pretty good this year too. Yes. Uh, you know, they could even start the year at a higher rank. But all right, so uh, we're going to wrap this up right now. I want to thank Dylan Rita and, as always, my right arm back there, Caleb Brown. So for Dylan, for Caleb, I am Alan Slaughterzinski. You've been watching the BSN one-on-one summer series. Uh as always, have a great night, and you know what? Be sure to make it a sports night.